checked out from Lupron this morning and we're heading to Great Inagua in the Bahamas. We've got about 170 nautical miles to Great Inagua and right now the wind's mostly behind us and only about uh, 12 knots. So it's pretty slow progress so far. Maybe you've been wondering what there is to do on a boat while sailing to the next destination. Well, the most popular thing, at least on our boat, is to try to catch up on your sleep while you can. Watching a movie can work, as long as someone else is watching the boat, or you can just watch the waves. It takes some forethought to keep your food from spilling everywhere, but meals and snacks are the highlights of the day. If eating doesn't keep you busy long enough, you can listen to some music, read a book, write a book, or listen to a book. Sometimes you'll actually have to steer, but even if you don't, some people seem to enjoy watching the chart platter tick off every tenth of a nautical mile. about 40 miles north of Haiti right now on our way back to the Bahamas. Um, had pretty good wind all through the night. Uh, we were able to make good progress. It was nice, nice comfortable. Didn't really have to even adjust the monitor or do anything. Just uh, cruising along. Although this morning the wind's falling kind of light again so we had to, I don't know, we're sailing a little bit off course just to keep moving. So I'm not sure if we're going to make it in before dark or not. But we're making pretty good progress anyways. Um, had some shipping traffic last night. Um, mostly the stuff was pretty far away, but we had one cruise ship that passed pretty close to us. I had to hail him on the radio just to make sure they, they saw us. Um, he said he had us on the radar though, so he wasn't going to run us over, but they got pretty close to us. But uh, yeah, it's mostly been pretty uneventful passage so far, which is always good. Great Inagua and we've got about an hour of sunlight left so before we even clean up the boat from sailing we're gonna get in the water. I'm going straight in. I saw a bunch of sand dollars. You can see just right into the water. I already jumped in the water and got a nice size conch so looks like we're having um, conch salad for dinner. You're gonna try not to cut your finger open this time. Yeah the last time we did this it went badly so Hopefully this time it doesn't take me like two hours to get them out of here. <laughs> Dinner. <laughs> it looks like some kind of alien creature. Well, it came out in one piece. It did come out in one piece this time. More or less. Yeah, it looks much better. The last one was tenderized before I even got it out of its shell. There are a few islands in the Caribbean that have flocks of flamingos, and Great Inagua is one of them. Since we'd missed all the others, I insisted we stop to go see the world's largest breeding flock of West Indian flamingos, who make their home on this out island, conveniently located on our route to the rest of the Bahamas. We contacted the National Park in the morning, and Casper was ready to show us the island a few hours later. Our first stop was the Salt Flats, producing over a million pounds of salt each year for Morton Salt. As it turns out, salt and flamingos go very well together, and it's all because of shrimp. Brine shrimp live in the salt pans, and we know flamingos love to eat shrimp because it's the beta carotene found in shrimp that turns flamingos pink. The shrimp feed on the algae that forms in salt flats, and then the birds eat the shrimp, providing a natural cleaning process for salt production. Swimming into the tree. 
Sorry for the shaky footage. We don't have a telephoto lens, so we tried to get a close-up shot through the spotting scope. During breeding season, 60,000 flamingos can be found here. Great Inagua is the third largest island in the Bahamas, and half of it is a national park designated to protect the birds. This is as close as we could get to them because apparently if they're startled when they're all packed together like this and they try to fly, they end up trampling each other. So we kept our island tour moving. Is still remaining. They said they just recently switched this over to a solar electric light. No more hand crank kerosene light. Pretty sweet view from up here. We found this cool little gazebo at the library with free Wi Fi. So, checking the weather before our next overnight passage. So, and got the Matthew Town Harbor was under construction during our visit. The docks had been removed, so we had to climb up and down a seven foot wall to get into town. Come down like a ladder. Uh -huh.
I found very appropriate. It's a really old copy of Robinson Crusoe. High winds kept us in the bite of Crooked and Ackland's Island for about a week. We went four days without seeing another person, exploring new beaches and old settlements, and enjoying the changing shades of the water as the sun rose and set each day. Nothing.